Okay, so we're just about to do a video on E-step calibration process with the Voron. Um, that's a reasonably complex and simple scenario. But um, so we're just going to jump straight into it and we'll see you at the printhead. So if you're doing this for the first time or if you're having problems and you're coming back after you've put some plastic through and you've got problems, um, you are going to, if you haven't done this before, you just leave the nozzle out if you haven't actually put any plastic through this and it's brand new. If you have, just um, you'll need a socket but don't undo this until it's at um, temperature so you need to heat it up otherwise you'll you can potentially same with when you're putting it back in um, you can potentially cross thread it putting it in or snap it taking it out because all the plastic's locking it in so um, and I'm just going to take it in, in this case that you you um, have got problems and you're trying to do the the um, e-step calibration. If you're not, and you're a first time um, get into the, getting into the e-step e calibration for the Voron, then you would leave your nozzle out um, and then put it in once the calibration is done. So basically open up your clockwork too, basically like that. I'm going to turn it on. Leave it nice and high so that you can um, We'll let that boot up and cut off about, I don't know, half a metre to a metre of, um, of uh, filament. So I'm just going to wait till that comes up and then I'm going to jump on the uh, machine, uh, the, the clipper, and we're going to do a couple of things. So once this thing comes online, it should come up with a red light on the front, hopefully in here somewhere. And the LED should light up, hopefully. Okay, so we'll just jump onto... Okay, so the machine's come up online. I've logged into Clipper. We need to go from... It'll usually come up in the dashboard. So we go to the um, machine. And now we want to go into and set a few things up in the printer config. So scroll down um, below all the steppers until you find an extruder. It's around about line 240 to 260-ish. Um, and then we need to change a couple of things in here. So in this here we've got a line that says minimum extrude temperature. So co I, I copy that line and paste it in here again and then um, co uh, I'll do it if I can show you. So copy this line, control C and then enter and then control V to enter it and then just put in zero and then we're going to comment out this line here the, the minimum extrude temperature so this is to protect you trying to basically pump um, extrusion through a cold nozzle we don't want that because we're taking the nozzle out to do a free run um, calibration test so it's very important so I'll take this out so you don't get confused so that's how I do it and then once this test is done you come back in and you rearm this line uh, comment that out and rearm this line uncomment this so that it puts that 200 minimum um, temperature in because otherwise it, it'll just ch chatter and rip the rip the um, put lots of stress on your extruder and chatter the and the chatter the plastic and you end up with plastic all through everything and see it's just painful so so that's the first step so the next thing we need to do is open a notepad because you're going to need this later anyway might as well do it while we're in here and basically we want to have a look up here and there's a, a rotational distance here. Let's copy this rotational distance. Make sure you get the 22 so it's a standard configuration. Copy that. Get, your, um, get that up and then just put that as rotation distance. This will help you with your calculations. I'll show you later. Um, or you need it you definitely need it so um, don't worry about that that's one of my um, my calibrated actual settings so it'll be totally different for yours because um, there's just variances everywhere so we can save and restart that you must save and restart it otherwise it won't take and you will wonder why it's having issues so we need to actually heat up the, the um, nozzle now so it's pretty quick um, so we need to heat the, heat the extruder up 
um, I'm, I'm just going to heat it up to two, 210 and this has got a Rapido um, a, a high flow in it so it's quite fast so it may take longer for you it may not this takes I don't know about just over a minute to get up to temperature uh, which is which is pretty awesome um, so yeah so we need to heat this up so that we can get that nozzle out without um, putting extra stress on the threads and the, and the um, extruder itself because uh, you, you will most likely you might be lucky once but you most likely snap the um, nozzle inside the part um, and then you either buy a new one or you're going to have to heat it up to get that out with an easy out as a pain I, I haven't done it but I've, I've um, just, just saying so we'll just let that heat up to temperature it's there now so now we'll, we'll jump back onto the machine and we'll um, and we'll t take the nozzle out and we'll, we'll get started we'll give it a bit of a clean out as well so the, the heads at temperature now the nozzles at temperature so now we need to remove that so use get get them this unit up high enough so you can work under it and around it not not um, have to climb down and have there's a little wee gap in here so just get in, in there so that you can get to it. Pop your boot off, whatever whatever um, hot end you've got, take your boot off. And then put your um, nozzle removal tool in. And remember it's hot, so, and then slowly undo it. Just be careful right on the end, because it gets hot on, even this here is heated up. But it's at 210 degrees, so we're just gonna wind that out all the way out okay so there's still plastic in there which is good we have to cut that off later i wish i had got that when it was still hot never mind so we'll just i'll just trim that off there and we'll get to that we'll put that in later so now what we want to do is get our piece of um while it's still hot, get our piece of plast of uh, filament and just quickly poke it through and pull it back or poke it through and keep pulling it through just to make sure there's no bits of plastic actually in there which there may well be here so just get, so make sure you, everything's open here and you'll feel it go into the there we go. So just pull that through. And that's cleared that off and now we'll cut we'll cut off the little bits of um, where its temperature has affected it from both ends. Gotta be fast. And now I'll turn I'll turn that off. So now we've pulled that out, I'm just gonna turn the uh, probe off so that's down that's going to go cool it down to zero again okay so we're at 63 it's cooling down pretty quickly it should the fan should go off very shortly on the machine itself it turns off at 50 nearly there Okay, fan's turned off. Now that's at a safe temperature to work with. And once that cools down, with the fan, that fan's going at 100%, it'll take a minute or two to cool down. You want to get it down right below 50 degrees so that you can work with it safely. Into the extruder. Just get it so that it just starts poking out the bottom, like so. And then we're going to lock up the mechanism. So click all that in, and then I'm just going to put this up over the top. Yeah, put down this hole. Just out of the way, basically. And then what we do? So you're going to need um, some uh, masking tape or painters tape or whatever, and you're going to need a pair of verniers as well. 
So I'm just going to set these verniers to um, 120 millimeters. So 120 we want, okay, exact. So, and then what we're going to do is I'm just going to tear off a little piece of masking tape, just a little wee bit like that. Move it in your fingers in a few times so it's not so sticky. And then I'm going to do this, do this the same way every time and <laughs> make sure you haven't moved your um, thing and if you smack it on anything, check to make sure you've got that. 120. Lock that up nice and tight. Then, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sit this here, and right, I'm just going to tuck this in behind here, in behind this. Um, so it's going to be at that height. It's going to tuck this in behind, and then basically slide this down until. So I've come, come in from the side, uh, from this side, and as soon as it touches on your uh, vernier, you just leave it there and it's touching the thing, touching the paint, uh, the, the tape. And then what we're going to do, we're going to just go back into the software. We can hear it and see that. Yep, I think so. Here it is here. <laughs> so you might not have been able to see that, so basically you just want to get the um, your verniers up like that. Sit at the same spot every time, put that in behind, and then sit your tape so that it just touches the vernier blade and just stick it on there, just touch it on there and it will stay there. And that's your 120mm measurement sorted. And now we're going to feed through um, 100mm of filament. So we've got our tape marked on. Now what we're going to do is put through 100mm. So we need to check this. We need to set this. Normally this will be set up at um, like 5 or 10 or something like that. Um, so you just need to change that to 1, press it, and then change this, if it might be set to 10, change this to 50. So it's going to extract at, um, and if you haven't got that mark, that line set up in your config file, you, you these buttons will be greyed out, you won't be able to select it. So now what we're going to do, we don't have to worry about heating it up or anything like that, it's just sitting there at 28 degrees. And all we need to do is press extrude, wait one second and then extrude again and that's going to do a hundred millimeters of filament. So that looks like it's not moving but it actually is, it's, it's moving at one millimeter per second so it takes a long time to come through. And then just basically pull it up about five, five to ten mil, because it's definitely more than ten mil there. So maybe fifteen. And then I like to put a little bit of pressure on the, just tighten that up a fraction, so that you're using friction to move it up and down. And then I just basically sit this on here, and then sit it right there, right in, just in front of the um, filament and then slowly rise the, this up until I see this move and don't touch it with your hand because, because you will see it actually just touch the um, uh, touch the paper so I'll bring it up and it's a good indicator that you've actually put the target that put about two or three times and we've got 22.99 um, that's 
our reading. Double check it, do it, check it again. So it may be, it may be below, but maybe it may, so, so yeah, it might be less, it might be more, but you just need to basically do that, double check your, your reading. Get the tape though. So you might have to turn the tape around a little bit to get it to, get it to hit the, the tool. So just bring it down below it. Bring it as close as you can to the, the filament and just slowly bring it up until it hits that tape. You can see the tape move. Oh, it's probably easier if I do it from this side. It's just awkward with the camera and the way that's all. Otherwise you'd be right in here doing it. It's usually a lot easier than this. The camera's right where I would stand normally. So we'll just move this. It's like that, 23.3. That's the second time I've had that same reading. So do it two or three times. So 23.3. Okay. Let's move in and do some calculations. So I've tried to make this bit as easy as possible to follow along. You can stare at this page um, till the cows come home to, to figure it out and put your in, in, imputation points in. So basically calculating the rotation distance value the new rotation distance value that we need to actually get the calibration right because it's not right because we should have had exactly 20 millimeters and we ended up with 23.31 so with 3.31 millimeters um, un under extruding because if it had been at the 20 it would have been perfectly at 100 but there's three mil over that so it's it's only it's, it's got to be less than 100 mil that's come out so we'll figure that out right now. So basically, so we do the, the new rotational rotation distance value, which is a f one we need, equals the original rotation value from the printer CFG file in the extruder section, which is right here. So in the extruder section, you'll see this line here saying rotation distance. If you don't know how to get there, you go through here, um, you're in the, start in the dashboard, go to machine, printer.cfg and then it's around about 240-ish line it's, it's here uh, right there so copy that number exactly even right to the last digit um, six decimal places which this is the standard recommended boron start point so you grab that number um, and just copy it somewhere because we're going to need that so, um, so the first, so, so what we need to do now is um, take the 120, put put the 120 millimeters into your calculator. Get your calculator out. If you haven't got it, calc, enter. So go 120 um, minus 23.31, which is what we actually measured. That was actually remaining to the tape. One, not not twenty three point three one equals ninety six point six nine millimeters, which is the actual amount that we extruded. So that's your actual amount, which up here in the formula 
um, multiply so basically the old the original value which is this one here that we've just copied out of the CF out of out of here wherever it is multiplied by the sum of the actual extruded amount which is this bit here divided by the target amount which was a hundred millimeters so we just need to go 96.69 there it is um, divided by 100 millimeters and that gives us a value this is a multiplier of 0 0.9669 yours value will be different so that's what that's here 0 0.9669 need to be careful to make sure you don't get your um, your decimal places and numbers all mixed up because the calculation will come out wrong and you go oh hang on yeah okay so now we just now now to get the actual rotational distance figure out of the um, we, we just need to basically mul do this multiplier and that will come up with a final one that we need to change so we've got the 0.9969 we just times that by this number here and it might be easier for you to just put it into a in, into a sheet like this times it by this equals 21 so just go to six decimal places don't worry about having 10 so copy that and the new value is 21.928277 so we can copy that control C I've oh, just pasted it so we just need to go to extruder and in this line change this number so from the 22 all the way out to here so delete that and then paste the new number in make sure you got your six decimal places and then save and restart And that's changed the um, config and updated it with that new figure. Um, and now we're going to uh, go at, back and do another 100, 100 millimeter feed and check to make sure that we're in that 0.5%. So we knew we were between 99.5 and 100.5. And we're just going to um, release this and pull it back up. Till it gets to 120 and then lock it up it's probably easier to do it that way than have to take it all off and measure it again so get your 120 on your calipers got your 120 there and we basically need to um, now sit this in place so we can pull this up and down sit this in place i should have done this the first time and then you can just basically twist it around Or not. Now, make the tape round, turn the tape round 90 degrees so it crosses the path of the blade. Carefully feed it up, check you've still got your 120. And basically, pull this down and behind. Sit there, I'll make sure it's sitting on the, make sure it's sitting on here. And slowly pull this down actually I'm, I'm going to need to move that tape up a bit because it's actually binding right in that spot so I'll just feed this down a little bit and basically bring this down and make sure that's on there bring this down until it touches Close this up. Just double check it that it's correct. Yep. And now we're going to do another hundred mil feed. I'll just do that now. So I'll wait for this thing to boot up, and we'll get back into it. We're nearly there. So just need to go to dashboard. 
make sure we're at zero here and one millimeter 50 and hit um, extrude and then extrude again So it's finished moving now. <clears throat> so I'll just zero it out. <clears throat> and we'll come through. Get calipers in here. Thank you. Mess up. Just tighten that a fraction so it doesn't keep dropping down. Bring this over a bit so that we can actually get to it. Not like that. So I'm just sitting this in the top hole, the very, very corner of the extrusion, just to keep it up there. Usually, if it's on the loading tube, it doesn't move. So now we just need to carefully bring this up. So we're allowed between 19.5 and 20.5. So that's perfect. That, that is calibrated, ready to go. So there's one last thing to do. Let's jump back on the PC and fix that. Okay. So there's actually two things that we needed to do. One, we need to turn the nozzle back on um, to 210 so that I can do this bit. Okay, so we're back up to 200 degrees on here. And we're just going to get you our nozzle. So I'm just going to put it in this one here first to get it started because it's this disappears down into here and you can't get it started. So Hold to make sure that it all comes through. We just need to get down and put this on. It should be nice and easy to turn in because everything's hot and melted and juicy. <laughs> Yeah, don't try and do this cold because you'll end up having a massive major and it's good because you can talk up the um, nozzle while it's nice and hot and then you can give it a quick wipe off and then put your um, your sleeve uh, your sleeve up just make sure with these ones they've got with the repeato it's got three mark, three kind of grooves here and you need to line it up on the right hand side, on that side there's a, the thermistor wires go up that way so have one of these facing out that way when you put it up and we're getting a bit of extrusion coming down still Be careful not to touch that nozzle with the burning stuff. So we'll just line this up. And that's it. So now that we've finished the last part, the very last part of the um, calibration, we do need to change one thing. I can't save it because I'm running a print at the moment. <laughs> Um, so you just normally go to, you'd go to machine, go to printer config, and then scroll down to that line around that 240 to 260 mark. Around the extruder part. And what you need to do is make sure you 
hashtag um, make sure this com this is commented out this this bit here extrude temp equals zero and which will be green if you've done it right and then make this take the um, the cross hatch out um, for the, the your minimum extruding temperature and that will basically stop a cold attempt to run the extruder through with a cold nozzle so and then just save and close and uh, it'll, so it'll, it'll save and restart so don't do it while you're doing anything else make sure you're not printing or anything like that and then we can turn that fan off now and we uh, the e calibration is now done and then you can feed through you can um, set up your tension on here I normally basically turn this um, uh, <clears throat> from loose spring till it just uh, just butts up and then I do seven quarter turns so from 12 to 3, 12 to 3, seven times and that seems to be about right but you'll be able to see how much you're chewing into this when you're when it's feeding through so anyway that's the ecal done thanks for tuning in I hope this helps somebody out there because there's not a lot of information that I could find really on how to exactly do this um, especially if you're not a mathematician most of us are um, or a lot of us are try show do so I'm going to try and show you and see if you can do it <laughs> so yeah rather than have to read through all the technical guff yes I was I had to have to have a bit of there because you've got to understand how it's done um, and the right way to do the calculation but apart from that it's actually not that bad once you actually nut that out anyway hope it helps some of you guys and gals out there um, I really hope it does, but it's a very, very important part of the of the the pre-startup process. If you like, most people they just chuck it in and away they go. Oh, to be right, that number's right, you know. Warren's given us that number, but it's not 100%. Um, As you can see, you've got to, um, you've just got to do it. Right, cheers. Okay, so we've successfully. Um, I can turn this back to zero now. And we've successfully done the full e calibration, e step calibration on the on the Voron 2.4. Um, all the Vorons would have a similar process if they're using this configuration with the um, distance um, rotation distance factor in the extruder section, which in a lot of ways is a lot less complex than having to worry about e steps. So, because it's an actual measurement, which is you know. Once you actually understand the calculation, it's not typically hard. So hopefully that's helped some of you people out there. I know it even helped me because I'm going to need to do this and, and look back at this video later and go, how did I do that? Yeah. So um, please leave a leave a comment, tick the tick the like and um, subscribe if you can or wish, and and then um, hit the bell if you have done that. So. But definitely leave some comments if you wish to, uh, you know, chat or, or ask questions. I'm more than happy to answer as many as I can. Um, or I'll put you onto the Discord and they can help you. Because um, lots of helpful folk on there. But anyway, we're the over and out. Have a good day and um, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.